Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. I just finished reading uh, Margaret Klein Solomon's Facing the Climate Emergency, How to Transform Yourself with Climate Truth. And I find it deeply concerning. I think that she is probably well-intentioned, um, but it's quite an emotionally demanding book to read because um, this poor woman is filled with fear of a climate apocalypse. And her solution is to become a climate warrior. Um, now, I find that one of the main problems is that this is all about emotion and not about the facts. And the problem is that the sources that I believe she has relied on for her climate information are based on what's called the Representative Concentration Pathway 8.5. And recently a paper came out by Roger PLK Jr. and uh, Justin uh, Ritchie. And this paper explores the phenomenon that this catastrophic scenario that some climate modelers developed in about 2011, um, this has become kind of the mainstream thesis of climate in media, in scholarly publications. But in fact, the RCP 8.5, which is a very catastrophic scenario of a great deal of warming and a huge use of, of coal and emissions of carbon dioxide, no climate mitigation, no climate policies, no new technologies. Um, so this is a very unlikely scenario, but this has become firmly embedded in the writings of many scholars, many IPCC reports, like the one that we uh, keep hearing about that we've only got 12 years left. Well, that, that's not true. Their uh, assessment was not that we only have 12 years left on Earth. The assessment was that after 12 years, if mitigation methods had not been implemented, then it would be a more complex problem to address. That's all. And it's based on this 8.5 scenario, which is very, very, very unlikely. So the problem now is that we have a very well-intentioned woman who's a clinical, trained clinical psychologist scaring the pants off people by telling them that the world is going to end and that um, to resolve it you must become a climate warrior and for her that is facing the climate truth. Uh, for me that's the opposite of truth. Um, I got into this uh, area of discussion because I've read a lot of history and one of the things that always bothered me when people would say, oh, you know, climate is changing and it's never been like this before. Years ago, I read a book by Barbara Tuchman called A Distant Mirror. And one of the things that always stuck in my mind is that it was about this prince in the early beginnings of the Little Ice Age. And uh, every time he went off to start a war or a campaign of some kind, it rained like crazy, like biblical rainfall. And that always stuck in my mind that this poor fellow could never kind of succeed because the weather was always in his way. Um, and my mom was kind of an amateur uh, weather watcher. She and her, her sister actually, her sister actually was a citizen uh, weather reporter for the National Network at the time. But my mom also did what she did. Every day she would track what the weather conditions were, what the changes were, what the temperature was, morning, noon, and evening, and marked it on the calendar at home. So I always had this interest in, in weather. Um, but, uh, you know, when I, when I see this, and I see these fellows here who are raising a, a wind turbine as if raising the flag at Iwa Jima, and, you know, they're proposing that we have a World War II style attack on climate. Um, and again, I, I find that completely wrong because my mother, the same woman I just spoke about, were, was in World War II. She was in Britain at the time. She was with the Auxiliary Territorial Service and she uh, drove a three-ton convoy truck 
Uh, she was just a little person, but she was brave as all get out and just would simply get to work and do what needed to be done. Um, so I think that comparing climate change to World War II is really an insult to veterans like my mom and my dad and my uncles and my uncle who was lost in battle uh, because all of them fought in World War II and one of them didn't come home. So, you know, she, she's basing her whole thesis on this RCP 8.5 and a faulty um, understanding of the IPCC 1.5 report, SR 1.5 report. Uh, and I think that people should have a closer look at the scientific evidence. Uh, people should consider the fact that we've warmed less than one degree over a hundred years. And Nobel laureate Dr. Ivar Jivar says that that to him is a very stable planet, less than one degree over a hundred years. It's pretty stable. Um, again, you know, many people see the whole carbon dioxide issue as the sole driver of climate change, and that is also a mistake in my view. Because how come in the Little Ice Age there could be these catastrophic storms that so bothered that prince I spoke of earlier, um, and yet today we don't have that? What caused it then? That was not CO2, and that was not from human emissions. So there are obviously many natural factors that affect climate change. Anyway, this woman uh, also started the um, the climate emergency, you know, our house is on fire theme. And Greta, of course, picked that up and made it quite famous. And, and that's really dangerous because we're not in a climate emergency. We have lots of time. Um, and that's what all these IPCC reports say in the fine print. They say that this is a chaotic system. We don't have enough data to predict the long-term future. And the models are useful, climate models, simulations, are useful for understanding climate, but they're useless for predicting climate. So, um, you know, if you do have a read, take it with a grain of salt. And uh, I, I wish her well. I hope that she gets through this fear because I, I think it's almost a phobia. And, um, uh, and that's too bad because we live in a beautiful world. We've got lots of troubles right now in the world with COVID-19. We've got troubles with the economy. We're going to have a long, long road to recovery from all of this. Uh, so we don't need any more scaremongering on issues like climate. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.